All right, everyone. So with that being said, it looks like we have uh, a bunch of people hopping in here still as is. Again, my name is Christian. I am a trainer here at Inside Real Estate with KV Core. Uh, I am usually the moderator of these. However, we've got a couple of people a bit too busy today. So I'm going to be the special guest for today, and I'm going to show off some of my favorite tools here. Uh, I'm going to be looking at landing pages, and that's going to be the first general part that we take a look at. I'm going to take us through it here in KV Courts, maybe view the different ways you can set these up. If you have no idea what a landing page is, here are some examples I've built out. These are completely separate types of landing pages. They are designed to gather contacts and have them register, and so I can, you know, get them in my platform and hopefully get some business out of them. But I will be going around the different ways you can use these, the different types of landing pages. And I'm just going to kind of have this huge crash course today. Uh, so for about the first half an hour, I would say that's all we're going to be talking about. However, I've had a very awesome guy here, Rich Schaefer. He's been waiting patiently. I'm going to allow you to talk there, Rich. Feel free to ask your question. So can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hey, Rich. So my question is, is I have the core video uh -huh. that I use for the, the click on the person video response and then uh -huh. also building out some drip campaigns using sure. the video. Okay. My question is, and um, it goes back to a seminar that I think you and Ryan had a while back uh -huh. about Mojo and keeping the people within Mojo. Um, until you get some kind of interactions and stuff from them? Um, I'm not, I, I don't recall okay. specifically what was said, but I think I remember where anyway, that conversation was. Anyway, I have about 10,000 people in Mojo. So I okay. actually was going to go and get a separate BombBomb bomb account because you can't use BombBomb bomb with your KV, with the KV Core version of BombBomb. Bomb. Okay. But in working with BombBomb, bomb, they don't have any integration um, so like the, the contact and stuff in uh -huh. Mojo, I'd literally have to create duplicate videos. Do you mm. know if anybody has tried to address that with them? Cause no. literally you have to create the video for the core video. And then you have to create the same video again mm -hmm. for the other. I mean, that's really tiny. Yeah, it's, it's kind of, and it's difficult you do to make twice both the work. The same quality. Yeah. Um, you know, as of right now, I'm not too aware of anything. Uh, that can maybe ease that. Uh, the only kind of recommendation I would give is just to make sure that one, maybe you're just using the same email uh, as your Mojo dialer or your, your login with your BombBomb. Uh, the reason for that is it tends to sync over a lot of communication. Uh, following that though, I'm not too sure how you would want to go about this, but my recommendation is that you really shouldn't need Mojo dialer. Uh, from, from my expertise from my know-how from everything that I've seen, KV Core is designed to replace that. Uh, so Rich, from my perspective, you may want to move towards just the whole KV Core CRM and so that way you don't have to rely on a completely separate system. But uh, for what you're looking to do, I, I'm not sure if it's uh, possible yet. Well, what the Mojo does is take like the terminated listings and expired listings mm -hmm. and it immediately gives me all of the information about the person. Otherwise, I have to literally go through property records and everything like that, trying to line it up. I mean, it's like $40 a month versus hours a day. Okay. No, I, I hear that. If, if, if it's something that can work with you, great. Uh, but for now, since it, it's not necessarily something that we can help with, I would say, uh, maybe reach out to our support team, our marketplace support team may be able to look at some different ways you can integrate these tools. And maybe there's some possibility that I'm not aware of, uh, but they, we do have a specific marketplace support team that works with these third party tools, such as, you know, Mojo Dialer and uh, what you would call uh, core video with us, but Bomb Bomb as it's regularly known as. Yeah, well, right I do have the sync for Mojo into KV Core. Oh, what do? I'm trying to avoid is sending all of the leads into KV Core that are ending up relisting or something like that, or that I haven't had interactions. I have um, expired listings going all the way back to 2016 yeah. that have been <laughs> never relisted. So I would say an interesting request. It's not unheard of, but 
I guess we'll we'll have to look at something else there. Uh, but again, Rich, sorry for not giving you the best answer here. Just double check with our our marketplace support team uh, and see if they can maybe help with that setup there. And okay, making sure I will. That, Thank you, man. That goes through there. All right, Rich. Thanks for bringing up that question. Pretty interesting talking point. With that being said, though, guys. Let's go ahead and head over to our landing pages. I do want to focus on these because one, these are tools that you just have. You're, you're, you're allowed to use these as much as you want, okay? But I'm also going to go into some thought processes behind these. And we're going to go through the different areas. We're, we're doing a deep dive on this tool here. So if none of you have used landing pages before, I will say this might be a bit advanced for you, but it's still helpful information, so stick around. Now. Following this here, I just need to select my website to start building this. I'm going to go ahead and bring up my website here. I'm a, an admin right now in this platform, so that's why you see that list. Generally, though, if you're just a regular agent, you're only going to see your website here. You need to select your website and click on Start Building. Now, it's going to open up this whole new window for you, and this page is yours to customize. Everything here from the wording to the imagery to the even type of registration that you're getting from the leads can be modified. The first area I want you to look at, though, before you touch anything here, is up in this upper left corner. Right here determines the type of landing page that we're going into. Okay, uh, Patricia, I saw your comment there. I will kind of review that in, in just a moment. I do see your question. The second half there, we'll be reviewing that kind of stuff. Alrighty, so keep the questions coming, guys. If you do have them, you can always raise your hand, you can chat them in, and I'll be able to see that. Now, from this standpoint, we are looking to maybe build a type of landing page. What kind of marketing are we looking to do with this? All right, now here's the thing. I like getting leads. It's probably like everyone else does here, but you need to be careful how you're determining the factor or the idea that you put behind this landing page to entice these leads. What information are you going to be offering? What information are you stating? What are you going to bring to these contacts in order for them to give you your information or their information, excuse me, not yours. Now, following this here, you have different types of landing pages. You have a video view one where you can add a video to this. You'll also have a video and a lead generation landing page where you can force people to still register, but have that video to watch. And then these other types of landing pages that you have to offer, a content hijack page. I'm going to state this right now. This is a great tool just to kind of make announcements or share things, maybe uh, your list of vendors that you use, or better yet, maybe it's um, something that you want to just guide the leads to because you have an open house this weekend. I mean, it could be any number of reasons, obviously. Heck, even a kid's PTA meeting would be a great resource here and talking about it. If you have a, a child that's in school and you help at the PTA meetings and stuff or fundraisers or anything like that, use these landing pages exactly for it here, okay? Uh, following behind this, you have different types, a text lead landing page. And honestly, guys, I wanna show this tool off to you here today because this uses that smart number. OK, uh, Patricia, we, we might have some reasoning why you might want to replace Mojo Dialer specifically because of these text codes. All right. Now, following this here, the landing page itself, every piece of wording here is customizable. You get to say what you want to right? say whatever you want. But this is where the uh, the planning and kind of the uh, I would say how you be careful about this page. This is where you need to kind of critically think about who you are marketing to. So a very common trait, I would say, or a very common demographic with leads these days are first time home buyers. Are you a first oops, time home buyer? Be scary. And we want to help you with this. We want to help you. After all, it's your home. All right. Now, generic wording aside, okay, what I am placing here is designed to get the attention of a contact, be it that 
this is who I'm looking for, or they know somebody that was looking for exactly this, okay? And these pieces here, I could add to it. I could offer some information like no strings attached. Just text the code to get more info. Actually, let's do this. Just text the code to get more info. And I'll edit the wording here. Maybe say something along the lines of, once you text the code, you'll get some more info. Or uh, highlighting the, the aspects to this, maybe the fact that I won't be sending them a constant stream of information, or maybe I will. Maybe that's what I want to entice people with, saying free daily alerts. And maybe info that is requested, not forced on you. Now, granted, this is some, some generic wording, but you guys can get as creative as you want with these pages, all right? Highlighting the changes or what I'm gonna be setting up here is with this text code. And this belongs to my smart number. If you're wondering where your text codes are or what you can do with these tools, you're gonna just be right in the lead engine here. Again, I told you we're gonna spend most of our day here. And with the landing pages, okay, what you'd wanna do is create a call and text capture tool. The text capture being the text code. All right. And when I click on get started here, I actually already have a set list of text codes that are available for me. You guys will have at least one. And it's most likely set to your name. Okay. And if you're unfamiliar with what text codes are, or if you've ever seen them before, or if you've never even heard about them, it's those tools that you see in marketing material that say text this code to this number to get more information. Right. You put it on sign writers before yourself. Maybe you've added it to a, a, a business card or a marketing piece, whatever it is. If you've never used it, though, you all have one right now. Now, from this perspective, this is going to be for myself. So this is being set up for Christian here. I already have this text code. And if you want, you can edit your default text code, not the actual code itself, but a message to send. Because what happens in these text codes here is you have the code itself and the content that you wish to send back. So as soon as somebody texts Christian to my smart number or to the office's smart number, they're going to be collected as a contact. And it's going to register them in my system with the information associated with that phone number. So the phone number, any names or emails that are associated with it as well, being that validation is run, but also I'm engaging with that lead saying you're super cool for reaching out. Do you have, uh, do you need any help for looking uh, uh, for a home? Or I, I worded this kind of strange, but the idea is there. Now, uh, because I am changing this around to first time home buyers, maybe I offer some information about first time home buyers, right? Here is some helpful info for first time home buyers. Patricia, you're asking, can we put HTML uh, in the custom text code? You cannot. No. These text messages are built out just, just like that. You can't add, uh, I would say, a lot of images to these. The only thing you can add as far as like embedding something into it is via the merge tags. Patricia, you've been here for a while. I know you know these tools. The merge tags via text codes would be, you know, that shift key and it's the, the weird squiggly line bracket next to it, okay? And you could put like, hi, lead first name, and it engages that with them with that key information. Or if you wanted to add a preview to a listing, maybe offer an image to that property, all you need to do is just put in the MLS ID there and we'll send it, okay? But as far as HTML coding goes, no, you can't, you can't insert it here. Following these text codes though, I'm just gonna put in link to make it seem like, yeah, that's the link that they're clicking on there. The other aspect to this are the hashtags. When you build out text codes, you have the opportunity to set these text codes to attach a hashtag to a lead. That hashtag, if you've used these other tools, okay, 
though that hashtag itself will attach to a contact and it could trigger any number of things such as a smart campaign a search alert a mass scheduled email those are just to name a couple right so these hashtags that you're attaching to a contact here are of a great importance here okay uh, patricia i'm a I'm a shaken. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your last name there. It says you're, you're still confused about the best way to have clients download, say, a buyer's guide uh, and then send them a thank you message. Uh, honestly, Patricia, I would say maybe the best way to handle that is via a smart campaign, meaning the first day you have that uh, guide go out to them and then the second day you send out that thank you message. All right, Tom. Uh, I, I noticed here that you mentioned the bit.ly link. Uh, you can use one. You can definitely include it here if you'd like. I always recommend, though, guide the leads back to your site. All right. So I'm going to save this here. I'm going to change the text code. All right. And let's just refresh the page, make sure it's gone through with that change. Give a second to load. Uh oh, there we go. It took a little bit longer than I was expecting. That's strange. All right. So bringing up that text code with my name in it, all righty. You will have this ability now. Here is some helpful info for first time home buyers and it's texting out to them. It's gonna send that message back. What I need to do though, is I need to make sure that this custom code is on this landing page. And that's the code area right here, Christian. Make sure you don't misspell your name. And once this is set here, the only last thing to do is modify the background. If you guys have used our background tool before, you know we have a bunch of default images that you are more than welcome to use, okay? We totally recommend it, but if you guys want, you can always use that custom background image, all right? Now, remember for the custom background image, you need the URL for that image to work, meaning the link to that image itself. Places that can provide this for you. There are plenty of tools out there. Uh, I use uh, one of these two. The first is Photo Bucket. And you might hear from different trainers that they use different tools, and that's fine. All of these tools that we do use, we would not recommend something that is not valid, safe, and secure. Okay. Photo Bucket, if you've never used it before, it is a, uh, a live service site. It's been around for probably about 15 plus years. They do have a paid option. Okay. You'll see those paid options there for you, but they also do have a free version in which you can upload at least 250 images. Okay. The other tool that I use is something called Imgur. I-M-G-U-R, or some people call it Imgur. <laughs> it's a weird name. And you can upload images here. Uh, let me sign in there. Give it a second. There we are. And I've actually added images to my imager account. <laughs> Go figure, right? And these are the images that I can use for, say, uh, this landing page, right? Maybe I want to use this one in specific. Well, whatever image you find that you want to use, make sure it is uploaded so that it has an accessible link. Remember, you need the URL. Now, from this area here, what I can do to grab the URL is just right click on the image, open it in a new tab, and that's it. You see how this is just that image, this page here? It's nothing else. It's no other piece. It's no other material. It's here. I'll copy this URL, go over back to my landing page, and choose that custom background option and paste this in. Click OK, and that's it. That is all I needed to do. Now, because this landing page is ready, it's set, I like it, it's ready to go, I'm going to save it. Now, the save isn't technically going to store this landing page in KV Core. It's going to save this landing page to your website. And as long as your KV Core website exists with that same URL, this landing page still exists with that URL. So I'm going to save this here. I'll click OK. And following that, the page is ready. Now. Before you do anything with these landing pages, I always just like to throw this out there, bookmark them, store them for later, all right? I'm gonna add this as a bookmark. I'm gonna put it in my other bookmarks because that's where all of my other landing pages are, as you can see. And now I'm ready to, to pump this bad boy out there, okay? Now I'm just gonna take a moment here because I see some questions have come in. Uh, let's see here. 
Rich, uh, can you use a widget or a link on a landing page to allow them to connect to bookings or Calendly to schedule for an appointment? Yes, yes, Rich, you definitely can, okay? The way I would do it if I used this tool, okay, is actually via the text code, all right? So instead, what I'd maybe do instead of guiding the leads to that, you know, first time home buyers information, I would edit this. And for this link, I would put in a link to my calend Calendly so that they can schedule an appointment with me, right? Schedule an appointment here through this link. I would just type that out right here. All right. Now, other aspects to it as well is you can build out more landing pages, of course, for that specific reason. Remember, you guys don't have to limit yourself to just the one or just a couple. You can build out hundreds, if not thousands of these landing pages. Ha have fun with it. Go wild. Experiment. Try these things out. Landing pages are a great tool to entice and interest other potential leads that have never even looked at you in that way, right? Sharing this with information, getting leads to register, those are the, the ideal situations. Okay. Don't worry, Garnet. I'm going to get to that in just a minute. Uh, Glenda, you're asking, what about sharing files after we get their info, like an e-guide? So there are opportunities to do that, okay? One can be that direct email to a contact containing dynamic content or a link to those files, okay? You could always set up a, a text option too, all right? I, I would say though, uh, the best way to make this happen is just a link to those files. Not including a file in a, an email, not including a file in a text message, because you can't do that with a text message, but emails are more likely to get flagged as spam when you start including files in them, okay? At least until you've had some kind of direct connection, especially with new leads. You might want to watch out with that. Uh, boom, boom, boom. All right, so Garnet here, you brought up a, a great point. Where do we post these landing pages? Well, honestly, there's a couple of different areas, but the first main area I would say is your social media. So Garnet here, what I would do is right up here in the upper left corner, you can just click on this little share button and it opens up these options for you. Obviously some big places here, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, all right? Those are some aspects to your business that you probably should be using, okay? After this question, Glenda, I'll get back to it. I'll get back to you there. But when you make these posts, okay, talk about them. You know, just bring up the information that you are, are, are willing to offer, right? Buying a home for the first time is always stressful. But there is no reason to be, especially with all of these great programs that are available for you. Text the code Christian. Oh. To 760, I think it was like 788 to 964, whatever. And then following this, I might say, click below for more details, all right? Now, hopefully you don't uh, misspell your name like I do. Ah, where is it? There, okay. And we'll put in some quotation marks just so they know. All right. Now, once this gets post here, posted here, excuse me, all right, I'm going to need to kind of stay on top of it. Okay. So it's, it's one thing to make the post. It really is. And I'm not going to fault you guys if you just did that. But it's not the only thing you should do. Sure, you can post it multiple areas. I posted it to Facebook. Maybe I posted on Twitter as well. Not a bad idea, right? But some of the things that you can do with this is being social on the posts themselves. All right. Talk about it, share it, recommend it to your friends, your, your family members, people that you know, maybe a fellow agent, okay? Utilizing these tools is just one step though. Well, Facebook here has you making this post, 
you're only posting to your own sphere of influence, your own followers, okay? What you should also do is combine this. Facebook has groups. Look up a group you can join. Real estate, city name. That's all you need to do. Just look up real estate and city name and you're gonna find some groups here. I've got real estate in San Diego. Here's one, real estate San Diego. Uh, San Diego real estate friends. This has almost 15,000 people in it. Now, are all of these people gonna be leads? Am I guaranteeing myself a, a database of 15,000 people? No, okay. But what I can offer here is maybe potential expansion with my sphere of influence, getting more followers to go and follow my page on Facebook, my business page, okay? You'll see here, there's obviously some other agents, okay? But you'll note here, a lot of them are active here. The cool thing is though, is while they're just posting images, you're posting landing pages. You're getting people to interact with you right away. That's the idea with this. Now I've built out this one landing page. It's a cool tool to use. I like recommending it, especially for this. I built this page out because guys, first time home buyers, somebody maybe around my age, I'm looking to buy a house myself, <laughs> not, not anytime soon. And don't worry, I already have an agent, it's my mom. I can't, I can't choose anyone else. <laughs> but the idea with this is that, hey, I'm targeting first time home buyers. That's a younger audience, right? Right? Like seriously, usually a first time home buyer is somebody usually below 40, I would say. And uh, you're going to need to do some homework in terms of who is under 40? Who am I marketing to? And the idea with that is since I know I'm marketing to say like the millennial Gen Z audience there, I'm using text codes. I'm using what they have in their hands every day. Guys, I have a, a, a top of the line cell phone myself, right? Some of you guys probably have the, the newest iPhone. I have the newest Samsung Galaxy. You think I'm on my phone all the time? Oh, you betcha, right? So that's a, a thing that you're gonna have to realize. Who are you marketing to? Are you building this out for a certain audience, a, a certain demographic and making sure that, hey, this landing page that I just showed off here, you guys can steal this. I, I won't hold it against you, go for it. But managing this idea, right? Having this for first time home buyers and knowing that being a first time home buyer probably places them in a younger demographic. That younger, younger demographic is less likely to sign up if they have to submit their emails. Seriously, that's, that's, a, that's a known fact. But if they just submit a text code, they're more likely to register. And therefore, you're more likely to get a lead. So there's a lot of thought that you need to put behind each of these pages. Now, I wouldn't say that <laughs> if you mess one up that it's useless. Absolutely not. Try it out. See if it works. See if it doesn't work. That's another thing. I've seen people build out a landing page in 20 seconds and get 20 leads in a day. But I've also seen people build out a landing page over the course of an hour and they only got two. And it happens. It does. What I can also recommend with these landing pages, though, is that when you do make posts for them, when you do share them, be consistent about it. I'm not saying post every day. And in fact, I actually recommend against that. But being consistent in the sense of, oh, you know what? Every Thursday night, I make a post. I, I share a landing page. And that idea there is going to be driven home by the actual results you get. And that leaves the final piece to the puzzle here when posting these. Landing pages are a tool to gather leads, okay? But you have to get the leads to actually see the landing page first, right? I've already talked about the different areas you're going to post it on, but also what matters is the time frame that you post these tools. Landing pages being one of them, while it's awesome, if you're posting at 1.30 in the afternoon, do you think many people are going to see that on Facebook? I would guess not. You know, I'm not guaranteeing that, but I know a lot of friends and a lot of family, they aren't on Facebook during the day. They aren't really being active during this time period given that they're probably at their own jobs, 
But you know what I might do is think, all right, so they usually work from like, you know, the typical nine to five schedule, whatever it is. Maybe I make a, a post at like 6 p.m. at night, 7, 8, 9, 10 p.m. either. You know, like I can go later. That's another thing too, guys. You can make these posts at a later point. If you deal with people like me, you know, first time home buyers, uh, I would say the younger generation, you're probably dealing with me at 11 o'clock at night. I'm on your site searching for listings at around midnight. That's, that's what I'm doing, right? And that's going to be something you need to maybe figure out, all right? Maybe making these posts at a certain time frame, trying to get as many eyes on them as possible. You think of the days. You think of the times of each day to make those posts, okay? And the idea with that is that, hey, while not a lot of people are viewing this right now, maybe I take it off, make the post later in the day and see how many people view it then. And that's just an idea here, guys. So with these landing pages, I do emphasize experimentation. Build out as many as you want. See what you like. See what you don't. Okay. These tools, landing pages, are for you to create customized ads. Now, other aspects to this, I know a lot of people use landing pages with Google Ads. It's a great way to generate business. I've always found that it's a, a tool. Landing pages are something that you can just kind of utilize with any other facet of the, the, I would say the marketing or uh, advertising per se, okay? Uh, here, Patricia, I see that you said, please talk about using newsfeed and stories for landing pages. Patricia, that's also a fantastic idea. I don't, I don't feel like I should say, you should raise your hand and talk about it. Do you wanna maybe share your experience with it? Have you done anything with that yet? Oh, uh, I did Patricia Omishkan. I meant Patricia Schneck. <laughs> no experience. Okay, okay. Now, <clears throat> one of the big things that I mentioned earlier there was the fact that you can announce events, okay? So when you build out the landing page and you're customizing the wording here and saying this, talk about like how the market health is doing, right? It's a seller's market, guys. If you're looking to get your listing onto the market, now is the time, right? and provide a, a link because you can guide those leads after they register to say that article that you found. You can send them there. That's the beautiful thing about these landing pages is you can guide them wherever you want them to, specifically with these lead generation ones, setting this up so that as soon as a contact registers, they go to that news feed there, Patricia. That's something that can happen there. But going beyond that, what I do mention here is that you guys don't have to stick to real estate in this. This is not just about listings. It's, it's a different kind of business. A real estate agent, you guys probably already know this, but I'm, I'm preaching to the choir anyways. 90% of what you do as an agent is talk, have a conversation, build rapport, right? Have a relationship with these clients. And because of that, okay, that doesn't mean you can't have at least some percentage of your landing pages created here so that this tool, okay, is advertising a market, talking about a, an event, or maybe that uh, article that you found talking about how much of a seller's market it is. Now, uh, Patricia, it says you meant newsfeed and stories within Facebook or landing pages. Does that work? Okay, okay. I'm sorry. You meant the, the newsfeed in and Facebook here. Mm. Does that work? Yeah, I mean, making these posts with the landing pages or squeeze pages, mind you, will display here. That's that landing page that I created a moment ago, right? With the, the text code. Um, there you go. And for the stories, I think this is what you were referring to there, Patricia. I have no idea. <laughs> I have not really used stories, but usually it's based off of a photo, okay? And I'm guessing, yeah, you would just select one here, open this up, and maybe crop it. Eh, I don't know. There we go, we'll try that. Uh, and then I guess share the story, add some text, or uh, put in that link. Maybe. I'm not too sure how to use these stories, though, Patricia. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Uh, my experience is really on the back end of Facebook here, not really 
setting these up there. Now, uh, cutting back, we did have some other questions come through. All righty. Uh, one of the bigger parts there, uh, Glenda, I did want to allow you to ask your question. I know you had something brought up there earlier. Uh, what about sharing files after their info? Oh, like an e guide? No, I think I already talked about that there. All right, guys, if you have any questions for me now, we're just going to head into the open Q&A part. So feel free to ask those. Again, chatting them in, letting me know via uh, raised hand. I can see those. And give me a moment here, guys, because I'm the only one moderating this. So not a lot of people are here to, to answer these questions. Patricia, go ahead. I see that you, you've raised your hand there. Um, I guess it's Patricia Mishakin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so the mentions for the picture, because I want to create it in Canva. Mm -hmm. So what do I, what dimensions do I go with? What's needed? Honestly, it's not the biggest of issues. I would just try and make it as HD as possible for those background images. So okay. it's, there's usually, I think it's like the, the 1260 by 1080, which is like your standard 1080p image. It's always good. Okay. But you can go smaller than that. Like, let me let me try and look up a, an image. Like the, the one that I use technically, this one, that's not a full 1080. Uh, this is 720 here. Okay. 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 Um, other ones though, let's see. Open this in a new tab. This is a full 1080 image. Okay. I can zoom in on it. I can use this. All right. So there's no honest recommendation. Just I would say make sure it's a bit bigger than like. Okay. You know, don't don't do like the the smaller pixel counts. Do do I would say, in the thousand range. Gotcha. And then, can you do video? And how long does it be like? So you I can, know. Yeah, you you can do video in the sense of this here, but for the background, mm -hmm. not yet. It's but I saw the new construction that they have. No, okay, so those. Those are GIFs. Those aren't videos. Oh. So like the construction option. Yeah, I know what you're talking about there. Uh, where is it? New construction here. That's a GIF. Okay. It's a moving image. Uh, technically, it's just like a set of images that are set there in the background. And if you don't notice this, it's very short. Like the, the size yeah, of this. Okay. Yeah, it's not a technical video. Now, as far as getting a GIF to run in the background, I am not too sure about how to do that. Uh, it may be something possible. I might have to get back to you on it, though. Okay, and one last question, because I'm still confused about this. So I'm trying to get somebody to download, like a buyer's guide, for instance, and I set it up. So once they click on the button that says download now, mm -hmm. do they automatically get downloaded? I mean, I know I'm going to use a Google link. You know, so, uh, generally... But no. So what, what happens is the link itself, like, let's just say it was linked here or whatever, they copy and paste and go to it or whatever. It's going to open up that page and then ask them if they want to download. So they need to open up the page first, and then it will confirm the, the download for them. Uh, so does it make them register? I guess I'm trying to understand, do they, do I capture their information? That, you know? So if you want to capture their information, put that login link or the download link right here, the URL after login. So in that sense, they have to register, submit their information in order to get that link. Does that make sense? Yes, but is it a valid, like, can they just put Daffy Duck email and click download and it'll download? They can, they can, yes. Oh. Um, unfortunately, that that is the case. People can submit fake information. The only way we can prevent it is if they uh, add in an email that literally just can exist. Like it, it just, there's no at Gmail aspect to it. So therefore it can't be added in. Okay, so what's the way around it? Cause I, that's what I was trying to get at. So is it better to do a campaign then and send them to, I mean, what's- I mean, you can do a campaign. Sense. So what, what I'm referring to here, like let's just build this landing page out. All right, I'm gonna copy this doc. I'll share this with you guys right now because this is the doc that you guys will have to access. Bookmark it if you can, but this is just a doc with all our recordings. And with this landing page here, I'm gonna paste that doc here, okay? Mm -hmm. And then I'll create this page. What you would in turn do is you would paste that link there, okay? And now that this page is ready, 
let's say we register. So I'm just going to go Patricia test two, three, four, five at email.com. Mm -hmm. Right. And then we'll just throw in a number there. Put in the number sign, not the at sign. See, it does prevent that <laughs> yeah. from happening. Okay. Uh, see this list now. And then see, it brings us to this yeah. page. So I don't want that. I want to capture. I want to basically send well, them an email and say, hey, download, click this link to okay. download. Okay. So if you, if you don't want that to happen, then you would, it would be best for you to put it into some marketing tools, like an email with that link via a scheduled mass email, or maybe just a smart campaign. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so it's it's possible. Uh, the the way that I was doing it though is just after they register, they get the information. So they they literally had to register here. They had to submit their info, and they did come in. And we can see here on the dashboard that you're a new lead in my system. Or oh, might not be there. but those that information not validated though, right? It could be anything. It's, even it's, though they do well, register. Validation is run, but remember what validation does is it doesn't state or it doesn't. Um, prevent fake leads from happening, it just states, hey, validation was run, but we could not prove the information given is valid. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. All right, okay. some good questions okay. coming in here, guys. Uh, ba -ba -ba -bum. Glenda, uh, you said, not sure how to create a link to an e-guide file that auto shares after I get the lead capture info. Um, with e-guide, I won't be able to speak too much to that here, Glenda. Uh, but what I will mention is if you can get it on to like, say, a Google document here, let me just show you, I'm going to open up my Google Drive account. And say it's to a document, say it's to a file, whatever it is, I'm going to create a new document, and we'll call this eGuide shared doc. Okay. And then what I can do from here is share this. Now, following this here, Okay, when I do share, I want to get a link, okay, either be it a viewer, a commenter, or an editor. 99.99% .99 of the time, unless they're going to edit the link from a Google Doc, okay, what you would do is just set it as a viewer link, okay. Uh, and I'm going to make sure that this is not restricted. Anyone with this link can access it. Right, I'll copy it. And then from there, where was I? I would include this in the email, all right, that I send out. Mass email, I've got this doc here, I've got the link, okay? And let me just put in testing and send out that email. Testing with this link. I'm going to insert the link into this word so it doesn't look like a long disgruntled mess of a, a link inserting it here paste it in i save it and now i sent and now since this email has sent out there let's go ahead and open up your profile oh who did i send the email to was it heather Uh, I thought I sent it to Patricia. Could be wrong though. Ah, man, who who did it send from, or who did it send to? Man, all right. Well, let's see here. Man, well, that's that's a little frustrating. We'll come back to it though. Uh, Tom, looks like you've raised your hand. I'm going to go ahead and allow you to speak there. Did you want to ask your question? Uh, Patricia, you're asking if we get core video, do we see analytics? Technically, it's a part of the same analytics as your business analytics there. So you'll see it as a part of the KV core activity. Tom, did you want to ask your question, my man? Uh oh. Do you have a mic there, Tom? I'm not hearing you. Did you mute yourself?
Unfortunate, Tom, I'm not hearing you come through right now. Uh, while you're fixing your mic, let me see if I have any other questions coming through. Let me just go back and try it one more time. CRM there, make sure it did go through because I thought I sent it to Patricia. All right, I'll just redo this. So we're going to repeat this process here, Glenda. Send that email. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Is that you there, Tom? Yeah. <laughs> just the wrong microphone was picked, was chosen. I have ah. a just quick question with regard to squeeze pages, multi-property, and it's the location, searching. Okay. And uh, I find it uh, to get the biggest, I'm in San Antonio, so uh, I would choose Bear County, which is... Uh, okay. Where San Antonio is. But the market is in all the surrounding counties. Mm -hmm. So even going for the county, uh, it's not like on some other search engines, you will get the greater San Antonio area, whatever, and it covers everything, if you know what I mean. Now, if you do the draw on a map, it seems to only draw in the county you choose. Mm. And then I was hoping okay. this thing here used geographical areas rather than MLS areas. I, I, I really don't know what that means. Okay. Mm. Um, so <laughs> geographical areas, it's latitude, longitude. Uh, you know, like 70.4 degrees west, 120 degrees north, that kind of stuff. So well, uh, following... the, Okay, that means, but where, where do you enter those if you did know the... So it's okay. it's available via the search, the location there. Okay, so if I switch it over to use geographical areas, and where do you put in the latitude and longitude? Let's see here. It doesn't seem to offer anything different. Mm. The only thing it adds to the thing I see is listing status. If I turn it off, the listing status disappears. That's very strange. This has nothing to do with the listing status. Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, well, something is definitely wrong with that. That seems like a bug. <laughs> yeah. From and from my perspective, it, sh it should just allow you, or it, I thought it had a drop down from the last time I used it, but I could be wrong. Yeah. So, yeah. So I think with the, generally speaking, that the, you would want to have, because otherwise if you were searching uh, for something in particular, you'd have to go, well, mm -hmm. search each county, save the search, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah, you need to add criteria to it. But the draw on the map feature, uh, I wouldn't say should be limited to you because whatever areas you draw is what it's going to accept, okay? Within the given MLS coverage, okay? So like, you know, and if I, 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 I... You know, I don't... From what I tried, as if I put in Bayer County, and then I would say draw. So here, yeah, here's the thing. Don't put any location in here. It's this or this. That's why you're getting that issue. Oh, when you if said you have, this, oh, oh, yeah, okay. if you have a location associated, it's going to just pull from that location. So do either the location itself or the draw on the map feature, not both. Well, okay, let, let, let okay, I say draw, uh, okay, delete the, the county. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you should have now, free reign as far as how far you want to draw. To delete. I don't seem to be, well, I- You I, can always I, just refresh the page there if, if it's not displaying, um, like- Oh, okay. Side. Let me see here, just pulling this out there. All right, so there's the city. Right, and if I drew on the map, it's gonna try and just keep me in that area, but I can also just press on that X to remove it. Oh. Okay, so I don't have anything there now. So let me see if I draw on the map. Oh no, it's not It's not letting me click that X. Another bug, very cool. Uh, just refresh the page as the workaround right now, Tom. You're having a blast, I'm guessing, guessing with all this. Yeah, well, these issues. yeah, I, I, okay, if, if I, I don't draw area. Okay, maybe. 
Maybe. Just draw on a map. Oh, okay. Maybe uh -huh. this, 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 this. And then you can be as specific as you need to. Okay. So let's, here. like, I'll go up the coastline here. Apply. All right. And then following that, okay. then let's then go I, all the way up to Santa Monica. Then do the generate link. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, that's good. I mean, that's what. And then apply selection. That's all. Yeah, let me have a look. All right. And we can change sure. it around yes, too. Yes, 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 yes. That's marvelous. <laughs> you there you go, my man. Thank you. You can yeah. take the rest of the evening off. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Uh, all righty. So uh, another question came in uh, from Patricia there. Uh, it would be great if there was a radius option for drawing a map. So. I'm not trying to plug anything additional here, Patricia, but if you've ever heard, I think it was in our marketplace. Let me just double check more add-ons. Uh, nosy neighbor is what it's called. And I'm trying to look for it. It's not displaying there. Nosy neighbor is something that can offer a lot, including what you're asking for. Okay, a radius option. What I will mention that goes along with that though, okay, is that the nosy neighbor tool uh, offers ways to kind of track uh, the noise pollution, traffic, uh, schooling scores, a, a lot of crazy cool features come from nosy neighbor, including what you're looking for. Take a look at it. If it's something that, yeah, it's too expensive. All right, no worries. This is a tool that does that though, okay? Uh, you can search for the app at the top. Yes, Veronica, uh, we do have our KV Core app uh, that's available to you guys, all right? Uh, making sure that you guys do get this here. Go back to our dashboard. It's right here at the top. Download the mobile app, okay? Make sure you do get it, right? The app is very, very useful for you. It's like KV Core Lite on the go. Alrighty. And following that there, uh, other ideas besides a Google file. Um, Glenda, from our original question there with sending the email and stuff like that, uh, the, the basic emails that you send here, you can insert the link that goes directly to that download file. You can, but here is the thing. The reason why I'm recommending that you link out to a file like the Google Doc sheet here, okay, is the simple fact that download links, download links are highly scrutinized by email providers. Unless you have a straight up business email from Outlook or Google, I would never, ever, ever recommend to add a download link to an email coming from KB Core. All right, just in general too, as well, I've had, download links sent to me uh, from my mom before, and they've been flagged as spam. That's how crazy it can be. So just be careful with download links there, all right? Oh, you were talking about the nosy neighbor. Oh, <laughs> you saw it before I did there, Veronica. That's why. You've got better eyes than I. All righty. Uh, Patricia, uh, you're going back to the map feature here. Is drawing on a map reliable? I've heard that the results are not great. So I was curious about your experience. As far as I am aware, these are extremely accurate. The ones that come from KV Core and are working with your website because the integration is with your MLS feed. So if let's just say we use that, that tool again, going back over to our squeeze pages here and we drew a map, okay? And let's just pick a square. If you got anything on the outside of here, right? If a listing was on the outside of this in Vista per se, then we're obviously not gonna pull from it. The problem is though, is that not all listings <laughs> are labeled uh, correctly. <laughs> uh, Inrex drive time, there you go, Tom. Uh, but the, the idea with this here is that if it's outside of it, obviously it's, it shouldn't pull, but if it should be, like if I zoom in here, 
and let's just say a, a, a listing is right there off of Faraday Avenue, but it's pulling from outside of it, then there's an issue either one with the MLS and having the listing properly uploaded, or there's a disconnect. There's an issue between our feed from the MLS to your account in KB Core. And that's an issue we need to fix. So you should make us aware of it. But as far as like, uh, you know, this not being accurate, no, that's, that's not the case. I've never heard of any issues like that. All righty. Uh, how do you add a background on KV Core Premium powered uh, by BombBomb? Um, CISO, uh, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name there. Uh, for the background, uh, in terms of the landing pages, it's still the same, okay? Uh, I'm not aware of anything as far as the premium aspect, but if you have the KV Core tool and the BombBomb Bomb tool, or in what we call Core Video, as far as the background in your emails go, you would need to add an image there. Just jumping over to a quick email option, click on a lead profile, you set up an email here. Use the advanced editor, okay? The advanced editor allows you to drag images into this, okay? And following that piece there, let me see what uh, documents I have. Uh, somebody raised their hand and let it go down there for a second. Don't worry about that. If you do have a question, please feel free to ask. But from here, what I'm going to do is drag the content or the type of content that I want to place here, have it be an image. And you know what? Let's add another image. Okay. So we have two. And then what I'll do is have video in between. So maybe I'll have that core video on there. Maybe this is what you were looking to accomplish there. All right. And then from this perspective with the background images or the images that I wanna add, I just drag and drop. I'll drag and drop my beautiful mug here, have it at the top. You guys get to see a big version of my face. There I am scrolling down. Maybe I do another one. Let's go ahead and put in this image here. Give it a second to load and there we have it, okay? When will we be able to save landing pages? Tom, I don't know my man, I really don't. But what I will say is you don't need us to do that. Bookmark these. Look at how many I've saved from before. These are all different ones. And following that piece, you just bring up the one that you want to use. That's it. Uh, let's try this one here. That one looks to be old. There you go. All right. Just bookmark these pages in your browser so that you can use them time and time again. And what I'll also mention as well is that wherever you post them to, like say on your Facebook page, right? It's there for you to grab. Meaning go over to your profile, go into that landing page and look, you're right there. Share it again, you can do it, Ready? Uh, you put them in a Word document, Veronica. Hey, you're more organized than I. <laughs> we already know you've got a better eye. Uh, and you save it on your desktop there, yep. All righty. Uh, CISO there, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. I have allowed you to talk. Feel free to unmute yourself if you do have a mic. If you don't, okay, you okay, okay, okay. Uh oh, you got oh, some no. feedback there. All right. So, anyway, I'm talking about when I'm making a video myself mm -hmm. to a video, uh, video text. And how do I change the uh, background? Oh, for core video? Right, for core video. Oh, okay. Um, I'm not There's sure, a library actually. there that it says, but I cannot find the library of uh, background. Um, so here's the thing. Uh, so, so if if you have this tool, if you have it, right, uh, I have that. Yeah, you have this tool, right? Uh, from the yeah, you need to make sure that you have the advanced or the premium version. I, I have that. I have okay. that. And from there, the advanced editor should have options for backgrounds there. Yeah, I cannot find it. There's a uh, library that uh, hmm. I cannot find the me, library of background. Let me see if I can find some material for you there because right. I'm not too aware of it uh, just because I haven't done too much with core video myself. I'm more right. into to KV Core itself because technically right. this is a third-party product, but let me see here. Oh, okay, yeah. 
Thank you for clarifying that, though. It does help me out. Uh, okay. Backgrounds. Let's see here. How can I add a virtual background? Here we go. You want to share this with you? Yes, yeah, sure. Thank you. And here we are. This is that page. So, ah, there it is. Right. Yeah, you can change. Okay. So, can I find it in the bum bum or I can find it? I think you can upload them as well. So, there's that option right there to right. upload. Okay. All right. Yeah. And yeah, if you need help, our article sections here. Okay. We have right. how you can add a video to the background. Just click on it and it brings you down here. Right. See, the uh, somebody comment about the nosy neighbor. Mm -hmm. I have that for six months now and I got listing out of it, six listings. Wow. Wow. And, yeah. And uh, they call, those are like 80% uh, convert leads. That's an incredible rate. And, the, and those right. were just leads from looking at the nosy neighbor aspect on your site there? Yeah, at, uh, I yeah, I have like this that I you know I think I'm gonna buy one more code so that I can build the team because I'm an HP. I will just give those leads to my team. Mm -hmm. Really, yeah, my ad impression on Google, I have it for six months and I have three hundred thousand ad wow. impression and one zip code. Just so one zip code. So it's too expensive not to have it. Because it <laughs> well, I, I'm not right. trying to sell you on this here, uh, Patricia, but it looks but it, like it, you got to have it, Patricia. Yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, Veronica, he had this for about six months. I don't know if you got the whole story, but he's gotten about six listings just from this tool alone. And the, the uh, lead conversion rate, he's looking at about 80%. So 80% of those contacts that are coming in from nosy neighbor. This is him. This is, yeah, right. I know. Yeah, <laughs> guys, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's um, crazy. That is, that is, I've never even heard that much of a success there. So awesome to you, my man. I'm, I'm happy for you, really. And take a market, look at it. And that market thing is one point something million a pop. Wow. In Cali That's great. In, in the East Bay. Bay. Wait, what state are you on? East Bay, uh, Union City. Okay. And provided by Fremont. Right. One point something million. So Veronica, here's the, the thing. Nosy Neighbor isn't like a separate tool per se. It combines into your KV Core account. Right. So what happens is on your websites, okay? I, I can't show it off right now because I don't have a, a demo of this, but on your websites, like when you make a search, you're going to have this whole extra search option here for yourself. Like it's gonna add additional pieces to this. And we're looking in Mexico now, but looking at those pieces, you're gonna have like a, um, uh, what's it called? Like a, a, a hot and cold filter, right? So if, if a, an area is more noisy, it's gonna show up as red around here. But like say this area here is less noisy. It's like very quiet, it's very secluded it's gonna show as blue because it's nice and cool if it doesn't have that, okay? Yes, yes, Garnet. Uh, guys, what I'm gonna do for you right now, since I have this pulled up, the recording is going to be on this spreadsheet here. I'm going to try to have the most recent recording at the top, can't always guarantee it, all right? But guys, jump into this Google Doc to review today's recording. I'm glad you guys are getting something out of this. And then from there, you'll be able to uh, review the information. I have, I still haven't gotten Heather's up there from yesterday, but it should be up there. It's also going to be on our YouTube account. Uh, let me share a link there. It's right here. Jump into our YouTube account when you have a chance. Let me share it with you guys here. All right. You want to find out more about Nosy Neighbor? All right. Uh, schedule a time right here. You can learn more about it. All right, Garnet. Go to your marketplace. Look up nosy neighbor there. Learn more and schedule a time to figure out what you can do with it. Yeah, once they opt opted in, they said, oh, I like I have four right now that opted in in the last week. So oh, I, I need to talk to you. <laughs> there right? you go. 
Yeah. So. All right. Are you sure you don't work for Inside Real Estate here? No, I don't. I, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. I just oh, want to oh. learn more. I just want to learn more about uh, the system itself. Yeah, you're the in the right place, my man. The uh, text video, texting was cool. very, you know, that's very uh, effective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You Guys. have to spend money to capture consumers. Yeah, I mean that's that's the name of the game in real estate, though, right? Like half the the money you spend. I've heard of real estate agents getting like, you know, 300,000 in a year, but they already spent a hundred thousand on all that marketing, right? That's kind of crazy to think about. Uh, regardless though, guys, I do have to end this meeting. I am absolutely ecstatic that you all stuck around and you just listened to me today. So I'm happy about that. Uh, with that being said though, uh, same time Monday, we're going to be back here. Uh, Annalisa should be back. She, she took a couple days off there. Um, and then we're going to continue on. All right. You're very welcome there, Garnet. Everyone else, guys, thank you so much. All right. Uh, everyone, you have a great day. You stay safe. Enjoy the weekend. I'll see you all Monday. Thank you, Chris. And this very informative. You're very welcome there. Bye, everyone.